Hello everyone. Um, so this is a new video about advanced eye tracking. And here I will basically explain the different functionalities and options properties you can choose and set up for eye tracking. And I will split this up into different parts. So in this first part, I will talk about the general study settings regarding eye tracking. So I go to study settings and in here, I can activate the eye tracking on a study level. So I activate eye tracking and I, of course I choose the advanced eye tracking version two, um, which is our deep learning based eye tracking algorithm. And there are different settings uh, which I want to go through. So first of all, there's a length of calibration, which is uh, an important setting. It will determine how long the calibration um, will actually go. And there are four different uh, options. So by default, it's a five minute option or what takes roughly uh, in our uh, understanding about five minutes for the calibration. And um, there's also a very short type of calibration, only one minute. There's a kind of in between a uh, shorter uh, calibration which takes three minutes. And there's also a, a rather long uh, calibration which takes up to eight minutes. And the main difference between these calibration uh, uh, times so or how long they take is basically based on how many different head poses you can think of how many calibration points with um, together with how many different head poses the subject has to do during the calibration. So during the calibration, the subject will be asked to to perform different head uh, movements, and then for each uh, head pose. Um, there will be a few more points that uh, are, so to say, used for the calibration. And the more head poses there are, so to say, the longer it takes, uh, but also the more precise it gets. Yeah. Um, next setting here is the calibration uh, image type, which is can be either dots, or like contracting uh, red red circles, um, or it can be animal icons for the infant friendly mode which is the next option. So if you tick the infant friendly mode, um, certain instructions will appear, which are rather uh, guided towards the parent. Also some interesting music will play. So the infant will be not so bored. Um, and yeah, so there's, and yeah, the, the, in general, if you tick this, then basically a lot of settings will change to be infrared friendly. So there will be ML icons to be activated. It will be a short calibration and so on. But of course you can also change this back to whatever you wanted. Um, you can in general also play sounds uh, during the calibration so that each point uh, in the calibration, each target is accompanied by a sound to attract another uh, to attention. Um, you can show a grid underlying the calibration which can help anticipate the next point, but um, that's also optional. And then importantly, you can also show an initial test video, which we recommend because um, if you do this, the subject will basically, even before the study starts, the subject will see him or herself in a video stream with this face mesh overlay. So basically with the overlay of the, of the face mesh that you see during the calibration and that uh, will basically tell the subject, does this whole eye tracking uh, pipeline work for him? So there are some, uh, so to say, shortcomings for computers which not uh, have a, like an own dedicated graphic card or in general have a, uh, are not so performant. This might be very slow or, um, yeah, or not working at all because of the hardware specs. But if you do this initial test video, then the subject can basically see the sim or herself, does this really work? Um, because otherwise it's just stuck and doesn't really go further. And then um, the subject does not need to participate because it will anyway not, uh, let's say, not, not work for this person. And then this kind of ensures that only eye tracking is done for, for subjects where this is in principle working. You can of course also uh, share the kind of calibration data with us, which is very nice because then we can improve our algorithm but this is of course optional. And then the last uh, option here is about the um, head pose alignment. So I was already talking about this uh, for the calibration lengths and I explained this in more detail in another 
video about eye tracking, how this looks like, but um, we gave this also the name virtual chin rest because it is like a chin rest in an eye tracking lab where, so in a, in a normal hardware chin rest, participants have to basically rest their chin on this chin rest and thereby not move their heads in, in any direction to be very still. And we have, so to say, created a virtual version of this. So the subject doing the calibration has to define a center pose of their head. And then, so this is like in a 3D, uh, so to say, orientation of the head in all dimensions. And then later on, if the subject takes you know, part in the study and then would move their head uh, in, in, in one, like one direction out of the center pose. So like look to the left or right or up and down, goes front or back to the screen or anything like this. Then we would interrupt the experiment after the, uh, the current trial and ask the subject to realign, to refocus, so to say, uh, to this virtual chin rest to continue the study. So it's really making sure the subject is very focused and always has a, a roughly similar head position. Of course, there's some margin, which is uh, also important. But um, it ensures that, uh, so to say, I think in general, the, uh, the, the focus is on the screen for eye tracking. And um, this, of course, improves the, uh, the data quality. Um, there are three options for this. Basically, um, there's the option to uh, always enable it. So basically enforce this uh, virtual chin rest. Uh, you can disable it. And then there's also the option to sh um, enable it, but show an ignore button. So basically to disable it at runtime or during the study runs. And this can be, of course, uh, relevant for infant studies, for instance, where you might want to try to use this uh, virtual chin rest, but maybe for some infants, this works not so well and they're not really aligning so well uh, uh, back back to this, this virtual chin rest. Uh, and then you can, the parent could just press this ignore button and still continue collecting the data. Yeah, this uh, basically is uh, all the settings about eye tracking on the study uh, settings level. Um, there are more settings which will be covered in another video. Thank you.